This is WPTV Treasure Coast News. Ahead tonight, a deadly stabbing in Port St. Lucie that left one dead and another in the hospital and the little girl battling for her life in the community coming together to help. Good evening and welcome to Treasure Coast News on WPTV News Channel 5. I'm Megan McRoberts. Thank you so much for tuning in to our first ever newscast here on the Treasure Coast. Every Saturday at 7 p.m. you can join us for dedicated coverage of stories and issues in and around the Treasure Coast. That's from Stewart's all the way up to Sebastian. Here tonight we're at the St. Lucie County Fair, one of the biggest events of the weekend. Lots of people coming here tonight. Later on in the newscast we'll tell you what you need to know if you're planning to pack up your family and come on out here this weekend. But first, a look at some of the big headlines, biggest stories of the week and overnight. Overnight, a Port St. Lucie woman has died after police say she was stabbed by a man who then turned the knife on himself. Port St. Lucie police arrived at the victim's home for a wellness check after the man left troubling a troubling voice message on another person's phone. There they found a 48 year old woman dead and they took a man to an area hospital where he is in stable condition and he's expected to survive. PSLPD say they have obtained an arrest warrant and they will take him into custody when he's released. Police are stressing there is no threat to the public. A hit and run case in Stewart has ended with a local attorney charged with four counts of attempted murder. WPTV News Channel 5's John Shaman reports from the courtroom in Stewart. Beatrice Bijou. A first court appearance for 31 year old Beatrice Bijou, charged with four counts of first degree attempted murder. Stewart police say Bijou was behind the wheel of a car Tuesday that drove toward the sidewalk outside the Fresh Market at speeds of 30 to 35 miles per hour. The arrest report details that without stopping, the vehicle hit four people, sending one to the hospital, and Bijou then drove off. Officers spotted the car not far away on Palm Beach Road, where Bijou lives. After a first failed attempt to pull the vehicle over, Bijou ended up in the parking lot of the Stewart Police Department, where she was placed under arrest. This case, we believe that there's significant mental health issues at play. The affidavit goes on to say Bijou admitted to police she wanted to kill other people and herself. She added she was diagnosed in 2019 with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. I'm attorney Beatrice Bijou. Bijou is an attorney graduating from law school in 2016 and at last check in good standing with the Florida Bar. There are um, allegations of you know, intentionality here. Prosecutors asked the judge that if she were to bond out, she would have to wear a tracking device. The judge gave Bijou no bond on the major charges. The court has some very serious concerns about the safety of the public. Bijou's defense attorney did not provide any other comment after the hearing. In Stewart, John Shaman, WPTV, News Channel 5. Well, it used to be that deputies could see a 911 call was coming in, but they couldn't hear it. But that has now changed with a new real-time tool helping deputies better prepare for what they're pulling up to and get there faster. Chances are during any given shift, law enforcement officers like Sergeant Michael Dilks will hear a call like this one. Overdose calls. It's actually pretty common to get overdoses. And for one recent overdose, a new tool outfitted in every patrol car helped Sergeant Dilks be the first on scene. Live 911 lets law enforcement actually hear 911 calls and see where they're coming from instead of waiting for information to be relayed from dispatchers. I heard that you know, he's not breathing and um, I, I was able to respond before the call was actually dispatched. This photo shows Sergeant Dilks helping the man he says overdosed on heroin in front of two young children. His sister was giving CPR. Sergeant Dilks says Live 11 helped him better prepare for what he was about to walk into. I could hear the cries for help and please hurry, please hurry, but it just allows us to get more mentally prepared, I believe, as we arrive. He took over CPR and gave two rounds of Narcan. I've been to probably 100 overdoses and normally they're in some type of condition that we can work with or we're, we're like, okay, this guy's gonna be all right. This gentleman did not appear that he was gonna be all right when I got there. And because deputies can sometimes arrive faster than an ambulance, Sergeant Dilk says Live 911 helped him get to the scene seconds or potentially minutes faster than waiting for dispatch. I delivered the second dose of Narcan as the paramedics were getting there and I was able to, at that point, he started to breathe. Sergeant Dilk's now credited for reviving the man in time to get him to the hospital and make a full recovery. I want people to call 911 for overdoses. They do not want you to be worried about potentially facing any drug charges. He says they're only worried about saving a life. 
and they'll even offer resources to help with substance abuse. And it was a gorgeous day across the Treasure Coast. Here is a look from Jonathan Dickinson Park, State Park in Hope Sound. And uh, you know, the temperatures were a little bit above average, but the humidity wasn't too bad. So overall, I think a lot of folks felt today was uh, quite comfortable. And if you like today, you'll probably like tomorrow. However, it will be just a touch warmer by a few degrees. So yeah, nice day in Hope Sound. Nice day across much of the Treasure Coast as well. Taking a look at the satellite and radar, we are quiet across Indian River County, St. Lucie County, Martin County and Okeechobee County seeing a little teeny shower popping up there in Brevard, but uh, nothing affecting the Treasure Coast as we speak right now. OK, so for tonight, temperatures are going to stay on the mild side, uh, given uh, the relative uh, average temperature for this time of year. We're looking at readings mainly down into the upper 60s near the coast, low 60s inland. So say Okeechobee, you're going to be waking up to a temperature right around 62 degrees and if you live by the coast mid 60s to upper 60s mid 80s by the afternoon all those details coming up in just a few minutes Okay, thanks so much. An eight year old girl in Port St. Lucie is getting a big boost of support from her community. Aria Stockstill has been battling leukemia since her diagnosis back in October. But today, a group of realtors at Keller Williams launched a community fundraiser to help with the expected millions of dollars worth of care she'll need. Aria's aunt works in the industry and helps pull everyone together. Today, they aim to raise tens of thousands of dollars got my son here with me so it's yeah, I think any parent just wants to help right and and somebody who's going through all of that again you know the the community just wanted to do something nice I'm not surprised at all I have lived in Port St. Lucie almost my whole life and I've always felt that our community was amazing none of us can heal her but we can help her and support her And all of our thoughts, of course, are with Aria this week on Monday. She is in remission, actually, according to her family. But on Monday, she will start what could be a lengthy process of beginning a bone marrow transplant. Now, the only state certified domestic violence abuse center on the Treasure Coast is opening a new shelter in Vero Beach. The location is confidential to protect victims from their abusers. Back in January, the father of Gabby Petito, Joe Petito, visited the location with his wife. They wanted to donate thousands of dollars on behalf of their daughter's foundation. In fact, $15,000. The location is confidential to protect victims from their abusers. Back in January, the father of Gabby Petito, Joe Petito, visited the shelter with his wife. On behalf of his daughter's foundation, they donated $15,000. We actually save lives every single day. If you think about it, that one in three women and one in four men are exposed to domestic violence during their lifetime is a huge number of people. It's over one third of the population of this nation. The space includes individual rooms with 19 beds, two full-sized kitchens, and a common area for gathering. Well, it's time to reset. Families now have the opportunity to send their children to a select number of schools in Martin County during a controlled open enrollment. WPTV's Derek, Derek Lowe explains how it works. District leaders in Martin County say there are a variety of elementary schools, middle schools, and even one high school that's available for controlled open enrollment. Once a student is accepted, they can stay at that school through the highest grade level offered on that campus. The form asks parents to acknowledge that they can provide transportation for their student. It also asks which school the student currently attends and which open school here in Martin County the student would prefer to attend. In order for a school to be eligible to accept out-of-county students, district leaders say that school must be under 75% capacity. Families interested can go online to the district's website to fill out the form and can either email it or drop it off beginning March 1st. In February, we take a look at our capacity. We take a look at um, growth and projections for next school year, and we make a determination about the schools that we feel um, could be part of the controlled open enrollment plan for families from outside of our county to apply for attending school in the Martin County School District. Derek Lowe, WPTV News Channel 5. 
The controlled open enrollment program is required by Florida State statute. Capacity restrictions may vary by each individual school district. Well, the microchip shortage is being felt across the country, but how it has affected the Treasure Coast. TZ Palm gives us an exclusive look at how a St. Lucie County business is getting by. Now, exclusive Treasure Coast stories from our partners at TC Palm. Thanks, Megan. TC Palm's top premium story this week looks at how the global microchip shortage is affecting Treasure Coast businesses. The pandemic has caused a slowdown of microchip production, especially overseas where the majority are made. This has caused major supply chain issues for local companies relying on them. Before the pandemic, St. Lucie County manufacturer Phoenix Metal Products had multiple contracts with airlines to build chassis for airport vehicles. But in spring 2020, the airlines stopped making new orders. They also won't take deliveries from Phoenix and others because the near completed vehicles cannot be finished without local microchips. Local manufacturers TC Palm interviewed aren't expecting things to turn around until the end of 2023. Also this week, TC Palm produced a roundup of Treasure Coast restaurants that have opened, closed, or moved recently. Find these exclusive stories and more at tcpalm.com slash premium. I'm Executive Editor Adam Neal for TC Palm. Well, the pandemic hit the Treasure Coast hard. How tourism is helping its incredible rebound. And we had a lovely sunset tonight from Palm City in Martin County. So will Sunday turn out to be as nice as today? I'll let you know coming up after the break. WPTV Treasure Coast News will be right back. WPTV Treasure Coast News will be right back. Panic set in for many businesses and hotels at the beginning of the pandemic, but now nearly two years later, tourism has bounced back. WPTV's Ryan Hughes has more on the encouraging numbers we're seeing right now compared to pre pandemic bookings. Tucked off the road and sitting on the water near the St. Lucie Inlet. Business is incredible right now. Pirates Cove Resort and Marina in Stewart, known as the perfect little hideaway, has more than just rebounded from the pandemic. Business is booming. We are constantly completely booked out. Um, the, the past two weeks, we've been booked out every day of the week. Resort manager David Freeman says numbers started turning around about six months after being forced to shut down for a few weeks in 2020. And now occupancy is up about 40% higher than it was in 2019 before the pandemic. Here recently, I've been noticing a lot of people that have been coming from the West Coast. So they'll come across the state, they'll stay here for three or four days, and then they'll go back across. Tourism has bounced back up and down the Treasure Coast, Indian River, St. Lucie and Martin counties all reporting higher occupancy rates in 2021 than what they saw in 2019. When things were starting to open up, people were comfortable coming down here. We also got uh, CARES funding from the Board of County Commissioners, which really helped. So we did a missed milestone um, campaign. We all missed a lot last year. All three counties working together, milestones. launching unique videos and advertising to attract visitors. And and Martin County says the numbers continue to climb so far in 2022. This year compared to 2019, which has kind of become the benchmark, we don't look at the other years, um, we're up 54% compared to 2019. Especially now our tourism is picking up even more. Now it's colder up north, so we're getting a lot more tourism. Some businesses are still facing a challenge with staffing shortages, but the numbers right now are looking promising here in Paradise, and occupancy rates are exceeding expectations. In Martin County, Ryan Hughes, WPTV, News Channel 5. To its neighbors on either side, Martin County would be considered more rural, but this week protests outside the county commission building over a movement to add a rural lifestyle designation to the county's comprehensive plan. WPTV's John Shaman is in Stewart. Farms, not many ranches and other signs of discontent. Protecting the environment is bipartisan. Opponents of proposed changes to the Martin County Comprehensive Plan gathered outside the county administration building Tuesday morning. This is a change for over 100,000 acres with the only thing that follows up pretty much is just them walking in and saying, I'd like that land use. The group then filled the chambers inside to express their displeasure. 
A more appropriate name for the new designation is not rural lifestyle, but playground for the rich. The commission debating a rural lifestyle designation that would allow for more home development in exchange for setting aside large areas of open space. It was sparked by a proposal to develop a portion of this nearly 1,500 acre parcel of land west of Hobe Sound. Atlantic Fields would consist of a golf course, cottages, worker dorms, and just over 300 multi million dollar homes. Our company has no interest in seeing the, the area around our farm urbanized. Supporters say this billion dollar plus community would provide public access to Atlantic Ridge State Park and offer other amenities. It was not lost on one commissioner the huge chunk of tax revenue it could provide. Just the county ad valorem side of this particular project is $20 million. What sparked many of the protesters was not just the stretching of the urban service boundaries to provide water and sewer, but the passing over the weekend of one of this area's most formidable environmentalists. Maggie Herchala was a five-term county commissioner. Her daughter-in-law told me that even as they went to the hospital, Herchala told her she felt this new zoning was a bad idea. The urban service boundary is a line that's drawn for a reason, and uh, Maggie well, would have defended that. Finally, after hours of discussion, commissioners agreed three to two to move the new zoning idea forward. The new zoning designation now needs to get approval from Tallahassee, and commissioners stress that no projects have been approved yet. The Atlantic Fields developers say that if their project does get approved, they're about two years away from construction. In Martin County, John Shaneman, WPTV, News Channel 5. City planners in Port St. Lucie have a plan they hope will come full circle. They say a different driveway design in front of new homes could help fix traffic problems. This new requirement, if passed, would come at the homeowner's expense. If passed at the next city council meeting on February 28th, new homes on these streets would be required to have a circular driveway. Currently, homes on the 30 listed streets are only required to have a 10 by 20 turnaround space. It's 10 by 20 for the turnaround space and that would only be considered if there was not adequate room for the driveways, like I said, such as a drainage canal would be impacting um, the placement of the driveway, a light pole maybe in the area. Leaders say existing homes and homes currently under construction would not be required to have a circular driveway, only new homes built after and if the proposed ordinance passes. Demolition has started in Hope Heights in Martin County, where some homes sat vacant after extensive flooding in 2020. The neighborhood already had drainage issues and weak infrastructure. Despite that, one neighbor says the demo is bittersweet. You know, these were people with families and they were our friends and it's really kind of sad to see them go. but. At the same time, it was also sad to see empty houses here, too. Through FEMA reimbursement, Martin County purchased 13 homes and plans to do some drainage improvements. Demolitions could take about 45 days. It's been a long time coming, but the Army Corps of Engineers has broken ground on a new storm water treatment area in St. Lucie County. This will help reduce the amount of sediment, phosphorus and nitrogen coming into the St. Lucie River, which can trigger those harmful algal blooms. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says it will treat water coming from the C-23 and C-24 basins in western St. Lucie County. Those are canals that are not connected to Lake Okeechobee, but still provide harmful algae blooms due to polluted water. The water will come into this river much, much cleaner with much less sediment. And that's the problem. People realize they were fixated on Lake Okeechobee discharges down south, the C-44, but honestly, a lot of the water and a lot of the pollution that comes into the St. Lucie comes from western lands in St. Lucie County. The nearly 2,600-acre stormwater treatment area is a component of the Indian River Lagoon South Project. <laughs> And it was a beauty today across the Treasure Coast. Lots of sunshine, blue skies. This was a little uh, time lapse from Palm City in Martin County and started the day with uh, really sunshine uh, galore. But then a few clouds came by, no rain and a beautiful sunset in Palm City. Similar scene from Jonathan Dickinson State Park in Hobe Sound. Just a few little fair weather cumulus clouds. A little breezy out there today with our winds out of the east and because of 
that easterly flow, we're going to continue to see mild temperatures overnight. Officially in Vero Beach, making it up to 80 degrees. The low this morning, a little chilly, 59 degrees. But once we made it into about 10 o'clock, temperatures were in the 70s, nice and warm. Current conditions for you uh, right now, it is 73 degrees in Stewart, 71 Palm City, 71 Port St. Lucie, Fellsmere, checking in at 74 degrees, 71 in Sebastian, Vero Beach, 70 degrees, and 72 in Fort Pierce, Jensen Beach, 73 degrees. Nice and quiet tonight across Indian River County, St. Lucie County, Martin County, and Okeechobee County. Now tomorrow, we could see a few showers, but certainly not a washout. Here's a look at your current winds out of the east, generally less than 10 miles per hour. And again, with that ocean influence, we're going to see fairly mild temperatures uh, near the beach, especially in Martin County, Hope Sound 66, but a little bit cooler. St. Lucie County and Indian River County, 62 Vero Beach, 62 in Fellsmere, 61 Port St. Lucie, 62 Indian Town, Stewart, 67 degrees for your overnight lows. And by the lake, Okeechobee down to 60 degrees, Port Mayaka, 62. So some weather headlines for you. We could see some patchy fog first thing Sunday morning mainly before 9 a.m. and generally the highest coverage would be inland locations. Temperatures will be warm tomorrow running about 5 to 10 degrees above average. The front moves through on Tuesday. That will give us just a quick little cool down, but not much. Viper cast showing some showers tomorrow afternoon. Monday mainly dry and notice the wind flow by Monday out of the north. That's going to drop the humidity a little bit and also cool us down, but generally mainly dry conditions because because we just have uh, a decent amount of dry air in the mid and upper levels. So rain chances 30% for Monday, Tuesday, then back down to 20% Wednesday into a Thursday. So tomorrow a hot one, 84 degrees, few passing showers possible. And here's your extended forecast 80s through Tuesday. Then we cool it off into the upper 70s Wednesday and Thursday with a slight chance of showers. Okay, thanks so much. Coming up after the break, your Treasure Coast sports update. When you're on the go, listen to our radio partners, WPSL and WSTU. Here are your Treasure Coast sports highlights with the ESPN 1063 sports team. What better way to spend your Saturday than at the Honda Classic? Good evening. I'm Tyre Smith, the ESPN 106.3, and schools in the Treasure Coast have been dominating all year. So we're going to start with the success of Pine School. As they, the Pine School Knights, they defeated Canterbury in the final minutes of the state championship game 3-2 to two, to capture the school's first ever state title in soccer. The Knights capped off a perfect 17-0 season will bring it home the big trophy. Pine School was dominant on all fronts this year as they didn't allow more than seven goals all season. This is head coach Stacey Wilson's first title win with the team and the significance of this win goes beyond the soccer team. I think for the younger kids, it just gave them a big sense of pride. Um, and it does, you know, it does put that like, I think now they maybe dream a little bit more, you know, they might have, have something they wish they could do and now they see that is possible with the hard work. So I'm really proud of our guys for, for stepping up to that aspect of being kind of role models. All right, thank you so much for joining us from Mind it runs from now until March 6. Plenty of stuff to do here with your whole family. Thanks again for tuning in for our very first Treasure Coast newscast here of WPG.